Hey, just a heads up, guys, that People of the Free Gift is now on Teespring, and we've got shirts, we've got hoodies, got uh, women and men's clothing, and we've got it in a variety of different colors, mostly red, black, and gray. Check the description down below. As I promised, uh, Thursdays we are going to be dealing with the Now You Know videos put out by the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints. You can see all of the topics we're going to be eventually diving into and starting from the Godhead to Jesus Christ, the Book of Mormon, what happens after we die, and so on and so on. So today we're going to be diving into the Now You Know video put out by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the Godhead. And so this should be interesting. This should give you the foundation point for what Mormons believe about God. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play the video. And then when it's pertinent to stop it and for me to make my comments, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's jump in. Central to the beliefs of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is their concept of God the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So right off the bat, I just want to point out that they believe that God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are not just separate persons, but separate beings. And I want you to listen for that language. Mormons properly known as Latter-day Saints, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, refer to these beings collectively as the Godhead. To understand the Godhead more fully, let's begin with the Latter-day Saint understanding of God. Latter-day Saints acknowledge and revere God the Father as the ultimate object of their worship. So, just to clarify, when they say God the Father, they are meaning that in a very literal sense. He is not just the Father of Jesus Christ, but He is the Father of us all, in a very literal sense, meaning that we were all His spirit children, as well as with Heavenly Mother, uh, in the pre-existence. He is the Supreme Being, the all-knowing and all-powerful Father of all mankind. So, when they say he is the father of all mankind, they are saying us. They believe that there are other creations on other planets, and that Heavenly Father himself has a Heavenly Father, who has a Heavenly Father, and back eternally, regressing even refer to him often as Heavenly Father, meaning the Father of their spirits. God the So, just like we have an earthly father on earth who gave birth to our bodies, our Heavenly Father gave birth to our spirits. Now, recently somebody pointed out a fallacy in that, in that they make a big deal about God the Father having a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, that's even in their scripture, but... He gives birth to spirit children. And so how does that work? Father appears in the scriptural record from time to time at very important events, like during the creation of the world as recorded in the Old Testament, or in the New Testament, for instance, when introducing his son, Jesus Christ, at the Savior's baptism. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. You may be confused and wondering, how is it that Jesus could be called the unique and only Son of God if we are all children of God? And that is a great question. They believe that Jesus is the only Son of God according to the flesh, meaning that God literally gave birth to Jesus' physical body with Mary. Latter-day Saints believe God is a loving Father to all His children and wants them to have all that He has. For this reason, He... So, when you hear them say He wants them to have all that He has, what that means is that we are all destined to be gods. That we, because we are spirit children, we are called gods in embryo. And if we prove ourselves worthy, we can return back to the celestial kingdom and progress towards godhood the same way that our Heavenly Father did when He was a human in our place. 
provided a plan of happiness and a savior to help his children learn of him and become more like him. So the savior's job, getting into the son now, the savior's the savior is the firstborn literal spirit child of Elohim. So he has not eternally existed, and so that is a distinction from Christianity. And the Savior, they call him the Savior, not my Savior, because his job was to be the Savior of the world. Latter-day Saints pray to and worship the Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord, Savior, and Redeemer of all his children. Jesus. So when they say Lord, Savior, and Redeemer of all of his children, they believe in a form of universalism in the sense that Jesus, by his death and resurrection, he accomplished the resurrection of us all. So we would have otherwise ceased to exist at death, but because Jesus died and rose again from the dead, all of us will rise from the dead and all of us will go to a level of heaven. They believe in three levels of heaven and the level of heaven that you go to is dependent upon your merit, your works. Christ, God's Son, was born in a manger, lived among the children of God, and taught his gospel of salvation. Jesus all So did you hear that? That he lived among the children of God. That is not a biblical concept. Jesus constantly set himself apart, saying, I my God is my father. And he even went so far as to say to the Pharisees, Your father is the devil, because you do what he does. And Jesus constantly set himself apart. In fact, it was because Jesus called himself the Son of God that the Pharisees said, you make yourself equal with God, and they wanted to stone him for blasphemy. And so the Bible records that we become the children of God through belief, through faith. And it's not that before that. God is called the father of our spirits, but it's because he is the creator of us all not because we are literally his children. There's a distinction between the creation of God and the children of God. Also suffered for the sins of mankind, was crucified. You notice that when they showed the picture of him suffering for all mankind, that they showed a picture of him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's something that the LDS Church teaches, is that that is the point in which Jesus bore the sins of the world. Now, when he bore the sins of the world, that doesn't mean that it's a free gift just because he uh, took them upon himself, the same way that Christianity is. Now, Jesus took the, the, the payment upon himself, so now you owe the debt to Jesus. ...and rose from the grave as a resurrected and glorified being. He is the great example for all of God's children. So notice when they said that he rose from the grave a resurrected and glorified being. The, the LDS believe that Jesus has not always been God, that he had to become God. And it was through his obedience, through his death on the cross and resurrection, that he fulfilled his plan. He lived that perfect life and he was the example for us. We are to do what Jesus did. We not die and rise again from the dead, but we are to live a perfect life. So Jesus progressed to become a God and he is presumably a God over another creation and he is their heavenly father. The Holy Ghost completes the Godhead as the messenger and revealer of the Father and the Son. Now, the Holy Ghost is an enigma in the LDS world because the Holy Ghost is a God. But how did he progress to be a God? In LDS theology, you must take on a body. You must be sent to this earth, take on a body, prove yourself worthy, and then you progress to become a god. The Holy Ghost is still a personage of spirit, and he's much like in Jehovah's Witnesses, God's active force in the world. And so he is truly an enigma in the LDS theology. We'll explain more about the Holy Ghost a bit later. Together, the three members of the Godhead are one in many ways, but don't confuse the Godhead with concepts of the Trinity found in other Christian faiths, as there are key differences which, for Latter-day Saints, are very important to understand. 
It can also be confusing at times when, in Scripture, they are sometimes referred to as one God, or when it says, the Father and Son are one. It's confusing because they're basically just basically saying, ignore those texts, they're confusing. We don't have a really good answer for them, uh, except for what you're going to hear, that they believe that they say that they are one in purpose, that their agenda is the same, that they have the same plan, they're working towards the same objective. For Latter-day Saints, this means they are all united in their thoughts, desires, knowledge, power, and purpose to love, guide, and save all of God's children. I just want to make a note, I didn't make it earlier, that they do not believe, they said that God is all-knowing, but they don't believe that. They believe that you progress as in God is still progressing. He is still underneath, lower than his heavenly Father, and he will never progress above him. And so for them to say in this video that he is all-knowing is a flat-out lie. They don't believe that he is all-knowing, that he is able to be present everywhere. They do not believe that he is all-powerful, and they do not believe that about God, the Father, about Jesus, or the Holy Ghost. One important concept is the understanding that each member of the Godhead is a different individual being. For example... So did you hear that? That each member of the Godhead is an, an individual being. They are separate beings. That is a distinction from the Trinity that believes that, that there is one God, three persons, that there is one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, are all called God, but God is not the Father, Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. But there's still only one God. There's no real way for the Mormons to claim that they believe that there is one God. The way they get around that is to say that there is one God for us meaning that there are infinite gods that are spread throughout the universe, and three of which we actually know of here, that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But we only pray to, we only worship God the Father. Now, this flies in the face of many verses in Isaiah, where God says, I know of no other God. There was no God formed before me. There is no God after me. Well, if he doesn't know of any other God, that would mean an LDS theology. He's not familiar with the Son. He's not familiar with the Spirit. He's not familiar with his Heavenly Father. He's not familiar with any of his children who have progressed to become gods themselves. Joseph Smith, a man whom God selected as his prophet to restore the Church of Jesus Christ to the earth, revealed that God the Father and his Son Jesus Christ are separate individual beings. Joseph saw... Okay, so this goes into the first vision, and there's lots of reasons why the first vision is proved to be fallacious, but that's a whole nother video. And so Joseph claims, after many different revisions, that he claimed that he saw God the Father and Jesus Christ both in bodies of flesh and bone. And this is where he started to change his theology towards this idea that God the Father has a body of flesh and bones and that he has progressed to become a God and that we are progressing to become a God. This also flies in the face of scripture that says that no one has seen God at any time, but when they have seen God in human flesh or when they've seen a, a representation of God, it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And so, scripturally, there is no basis for Joseph Smith's first vision. God the Father and Jesus in a personal visit from them in 1820. In Joseph's words, When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above me in the air. Now, the interesting thing is that Joseph concluded from this that they are two separate beings. But notice the language that he even uses. He uses the language of personages, persons, which is Trinitarian language. Like at the baptism of Jesus, we see Jesus 
we have the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove, and then you have the voice of God the Father, who is saying, this is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. They are all present, but they are all separate personages, but it does not deny the doctrine that there is one God. So Joseph actually embellished and elaborated even on his own experience and his own wording. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him. This is yet another example of God the Father introducing his beloved son. Joseph later recorded a revelation that he received, describing their physical bodies. The Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, the Son also, but the Holy Ghost has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. So, this is what we've already talked about, but I just want to point out that Jesus clearly says that God is spirit, that the New Testament clearly declares that God is invisible, and that Jesus, like I said, is the image of the invisible God. Were it not so, the Holy Ghost could not dwell in us. Now, let's talk more about what Latter-day Saints believe about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is often referred to as the Son of God, also called the Firstborn. Latter-day Saints believe he was the first spirit child created of heavenly parents and is the eldest brother to all of God's children. They all... Just a note, when you hear Christians say, point out, that Lucifer or Satan is a, the spirit brother of Jesus, that's technically true, but they're leaving out the... the that all angels, all demons, all humans who have ever lived are all spirit children and spirit brothers and sisters of Jesus. So Lucifer is the one who rebelled, started the rebellion against God, and he took others with him who tried to rebel, and then they were cast out of heaven without bodies. And that is, they, they stunned their progression forever, and so that explains Satan and his demons from an LDS point of view believe through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ made in Gethsemane and upon the cross he became the redeemer of all of God's children literally the savior of the world and now the reason why you I mentioned earlier they refer to him as the savior instead of my savior is because in order for somebody to be your savior they have to have actually saved you and no LDS person can be confident that Jesus has saved them because as their scripture points out we are saved by grace after all we can do and their scripture points out that we are perfectly capable of keep, capable and expected to keep the commandments of God and then Moroni 1032 says, After we have become perfect and denied ourselves of all ungodliness, then is the grace of God sufficient for us. So there is no LDS person who can say confidently that they know that they are forgiven. Jesus, they would say, made it possible for us to get back to Heavenly Father and be forgiven. But it is completely and totally up to us with his enabling power. Jesus' subsequent resurrection prepared the way for every person who ever lived or who will live to overcome physical death by also being resurrected with an immortal physical body. As the Apostle Paul explained in the New Testament, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Besides the many descriptions and names of Jesus Christ referred to in Scripture, Latter-day Saints also believe Jesus is the only way back to God the Father. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, let's talk about the third member of the... Now, just a clarifier here, Brigham Young stated that nobody will be able to enter into the celestial kingdom without the express consent of Joseph Smith alongside of Jesus. So it's not just as simple as believing in Jesus. They believe that if you believe in Jesus, that you will most likely go to the second level of heaven, known as the terrestrial kingdom, which is those who um, are 
they believe and they live a generally good life, but they have not attained unto perfection and God, godliness. The Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Also sometimes referred to as the Holy Ghost, he is, well, a spirit. He does not have a physical body, but his spiritual influence can be felt by all of God's children. This attribute allows him to work in perfect unity with Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, fulfilling several roles to help God's children live righteously and receive the blessings of the gospel. For instance, the Holy Ghost witnesses of the reality of the Father and the mission of the Son. And in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul describes other feelings associated with the Holy Ghost. Love, joy, peace. Did you catch that? Feelings, other feelings associated with the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit are interpreted by the LDS as feelings, and they associate this with what happens when you pray and ask God whether the Book of Mormon is true that you are to have these feelings. You have these good feelings, these burning feelings, and that is the Holy Spirit testifying to you that the Book of Mormon is true. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. The Holy Ghost also reveals and teaches the truth of all things. God taught the prophet Joseph Smith how all of God's... <clears throat> so they said the Holy Ghost teaches the truth of all things. And so that's how they, they get truth, is through their feelings. But if the Holy Ghost teaches the truth of all things, then why the need for a modern-day prophet and modern-day apostles? Children can receive a witness of truth for themselves by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yea, behold, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. So there it is. God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost make up the Godhead. They are three distinct beings with unique and important roles, but together they operate in perfect unity and harmony. God the Father loves all of His children and knows they will be happier and more fulfilled if they listen to and feel the direction from the Holy Ghost, follow the teachings and example of Jesus Christ, and return to live with Him. It's all part of God's plan. The Godhead, what it is and why it's important to understand. Now you know. All right, well, now you really know. And so uh, click subscribe and like and share and do all those things. I'd love to hear your comments on all this, uh, whether you agree or disagree. And so until next time, may God's grace be with you.